So somehow my face has become somewhat synonymous with Warhammer Epic due to a couple of successful videos. So it was no surprise to us that Games Workshop would send us the full box of the brand new version of Epic, Legions Imperialis. Now, whenever you get a box like this, the first question is, which Legion do you pick? However, we decided to paint them all. So we are gonna show you in this video how we would paint every single Legion in the Horus Heresy. And at the end, we're going to pick the armies that we're going to collect. But before we can paint any models, we need to have a good look at the contents of the box and see what you would be picking up on launch day. It's tabletop time? It is. So we wanted to give you our thoughts on the contents of this box now that we've had a chance to look through it. Now, regardless of how we braced ourselves, having seen some of the old Epic models, it's still crazy to see just how tiny these little guys are. And these have actually increased in scale from six mil to eight mil since the original Epic was launched. Probably what does it for me is that it's just, it's just boxed with like actual Titans. You get all that in the box. You get a really nice variety, but I think it'll come down to how well they go together when actually building them. One thing I do like about this box is while traditionally boxes often have two sides of forces that you can split and play with a friend, Legions Imperialis allows you to use the auxilia as an ally to the Legions or as a standalone army. So if you wanted this just for yourself, all of the models would be usable. But if you did want to split it with a friend, there's a perfect way to do that too. Something you can't do with the two opposing sides in a box typically is that you can just have the entire collection as one army. So for me, looking at all of these sculpts, I have to say I'm very impressed with the quality and fidelity of the miniatures. They're all really well put together. I also love that the infantry are connected to the sprue via their feet, which means there's an absolute minimal of sprue tags on these tiny models, which would be hard to clean up without damaging details. But I will say probably my only negative for this box is actually just the reality of casting in plastic at this scale, which is that on several of the more dynamically posed models, we have these stretched details where a leg becomes a giant clubbed foot or a bolter scope stretches all the way back into the torso. Yeah, it's kind of like there's just a feeling. It's only a few millimeters of plastic, but it fills out like as Dave said, an entire leg or something, which makes it a lot easier to cast and makes sense that it would happen, but it does detract from the model if you take it by itself and look really closely. Overall, I'm really happy with the contents of this box and it only makes me more and more excited to do some tiny, tiny Epic. It's like a smorgasbord of options. Now, there's something just a little bit special about these Epic sprues, and that's the fact that the entire model is attached by one sprue gate on the sprue, which means that I can theoretically prime this entire sheet, maybe except the Dreadnought, and then the only thing I have to do is clip off their feet, because the sprue's on the underside, and then I can stick it straight on the base, and there's a pre-primed model ready to go. You could, you could wash them on this. You could do most of the work on this sprue, and that's something that I have never done. Some people paint things on the sprue, and they're mad people. I'm gonna prime the entire sprue, because I think it's the most paint-conservative way and efficient way of spraying so many models at once. So let's go do that. You know, 20 years in the hobby, this is the first time I will ever paint on sprue. Yeah, same. <laughs> I see those sprues and I want them painted black. All right, so on a whim, we decided that we would paint the models on the sprue. Not only did I prime them on the sprue, but we we're gonna fully paint at least the first model entirely on the sprue. Possible, but not on camera, because we have to have, this is a good example, yeah. we have to have it in the right focal area, right focal length for it to be on camera and in focus on a tiny model that has a super narrow focal range, so like there. But then we need to be close enough to the model to actually, so we're painting like this and it's, yeah, it's not, no. Yeah, it's a bit rough, so um, uh, th that was a good experiment, but I think we'll paint the uh, the rest a bit more normally. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had the exact same problems. Just trying to keep it in the focal length uh, and hold it at the right angle so you can get to the parts with both the brush, your eyeballs to see what you're doing, and also the camera. Experiment over. Uh, you're welcome, everyone at home. Uh, we, we did the, uh, the legwork for you there. For 
very first Legion Dark Angels, I've decided I'm going to go with the black painted models, as that kind of makes sense. The less work I have to do in an army, the easier it's going to be. I'm going to take that and I'm going to start highlighting all the black areas. You could grab any old dark grey, however, I was just a little bit insane and I decided to mix a red, blue and a green together to make a very neutral colour. Why I did this? I don't know. I had the colours in front of me. But by mixing just a little extra green in there, I got that sort of tint that I think really lends to the Dark Angel's appearance. After that, it was time to start working on some of the details. Namely, the iconic red casing of the Dark Angel's weapon. And since I had chosen a plasma gun here, I am going to start painting it on the wrong end. Anyway, I'll fix that later. But in the meantime, I'm going to move on and start painting all the silver. Now, for my loyalists, I'm going to use predominantly a really nice bright silver to make them stand out and look really crisp. Now, after I've established a nice smooth coat over all the metallic areas I'm going to give that a nice wash of Black Templar just to really get into all the recesses and I think washing might be a really good move for all these models as they have a ridiculous amount of detail for how small they are. I can practically refer to the 28 mil scale models and all the detail I see there is on these tiny little epic models. So I'm going to paint the plasma coils white then I'll mix up my own contrast concoction using green and yellow. Then as final touches I'll paint in the eye lenses red and also work on a small checkered pattern on the forearm. This is entirely unnecessary but I wanted to see see if I could do it. It's a little bit tricky under the camera, but I think just doing a couple of dots in a pattern really gets the message across. And there I have it. I have my first tiny little epic marine. Now it's time to start on the next one. Now I gotta confess, when Murray and I split, I got traitors, he got loyalists. I was really excited because it meant I'd get to do my favorite legion of all time. And in fact, the first legion up for me to paint today is the second legion. And they were known for their awesome Primarch and, and their favored fighting style. So to represent that, picked a tactical so with the second legion done, I could move on to the next legion, the third, and they're mine as well. The traitors, the emperor's children. So picking a model that looked really good for emperor's children, I loved this apothecary that looks like he's part of the command squad. The fact that he's striding forward with a chainsaw in a duelist's pose really feels arrogantly emperor's children. And I imagine this as one of Fabius Bile's attendants or apprentices. You know, when painting at this scale, I find contrast paints can work really well. It does depend on the scheme. And with a light color such as purple and the white of the Apothecarian, I chose to use contrast on this model. I used Luxion purple for the Emperor's Children Heraldry and Apothecary white for the white areas, which just gives it a nice little gray tone. Painting on black Templar on all the areas that would end up being metallic, I could then highlight them with brass and silver rather than having to go through the whole process of hand painting, washing and highlighting, which makes it a super quick and easy way to pick out detail on models of this scale. Now, one thing that is unnecessarily complex on models of this scale and you totally don't have to do is Legion symbols. I tried to paint a metallic symbol of the Emperor's children, their legion iconography, and it turned out okay. Even using the smallest brushes in my arsenal, painting these, especially on camera, it's very hard to get extremely fine detail. But the great thing about this scale is you can lean back, look at them and enjoy, and they really do look good at a distance. As a final touch, I did get to use a Scorpion Green from Viejo to pick out those eye lenses. Yes, I'm mad. Now the next legionnaire in the run of traitors at the start of the legion count is the fourth legion, the Iron Warriors. Then these are the one of the legions I'm really excited to paint because I'm interested in potentially collecting Iron Warriors. I previously painted Iron Warriors in one of my earlier videos about Epic Armageddon, and it'll be interesting to see how they turn out painted on these new models. I grabbed a Cataphracty Terminator with what I'm calling a Graviton Hammer, as this is the most grungy Iron Warriors thing I could find. This scale, I just used Thrash Metal from Scale 75, painting over the whole model and then washing with null oil. I could then re-pick out areas in matte black, including the tassets, the bolter, and areas that would have the hazard stripe effect. The hazard stripe effect is actually easier at this scale than it is at large scales because you can use the width of the brush to dictate the lines. You don't have to worry about multiple brush strokes and you can generally achieve it with a single stroke. Also, due to the smaller area of the paint, the consistency of the yellow remains a lot stronger, which means you don't need to do as many coats. I used Vallejo's Filthy Brown and then gold yellow in two steps to build up these hazard stripes. For all the tassets, I highlighted the black with charred brown to keep them a really dirty leather appearance, then highlighted really roughly, almost dry brushing with a regular brush, all of the black areas with a gray. And then because I can't help myself, I painted a tiny Iron Warriors Legion icon, as well as the Legion Roman numeral four on his shoulder pad. Now let's see what Murray's been up to with those loyalists. Now we're already up to the fifth Legion, which is the White Scars. While they're known for mobility, they 
I certainly use the Terminators and I think it'll be really striking to paint a red and white Terminator. So grabbing the white sprue, I'm gonna start with one of those. First thing I'm gonna do when painting this white scar is actually do all the red iconography. Any trim area that you'd usually paint a metal, I'm gonna paint red, as well as just doing a nice bit of freehand marking on the hand. Then when this is done, it's time to give the entire model a wash using a bone color. I'm gonna get that nice ivory tone to the entirety of the armor. So I'm gonna go in with a bone colored wash and actually water it down quite a lot as I don't actually want to lose the whiteness, just to have the color settle in all the recesses. Then waiting for that to completely dry, this will lend that really nice ivory tone to the rest of the armor. And going over the red will just help blend it all in. I'm gonna go in with a darker brown contrast and just do all those tassels that hang down from the cataphracty limbs. Then following that up, I'm gonna use Black Templar to go over all the metal black areas, as Black Templar will give a really nice crisp highlight line to all those sharp areas. Then going in with my silver, I'll paint all the metallic barrels, the bolters and the chain fist. I'll use some black to paint the rest of the model's base. And there we have it, White Scars Cataphracty Terminator. And that leads us to the next legion on my list, the Sixth Legion, Space Wolves. Now, what could be more of a loyal dog to the Emperor than a standard tactical marine? So I'm gonna grab one of those using the white sprue, and I'm gonna go in with the Space Wolves contrast paint, which I have actually never used before, but I'm gonna see just how good it is for painting an epic scaled Space Wolf. Now, of course, 40K Space Wolves are a slightly different tone to 30K Space Wolves. They're a lot darker in the 30K. So what I'm gonna do to remedy that is just put the contrast on more heavily. Simple. And then once that's done, I'll paint all the black areas with black Templar, finishing it off by picking out the bolter with silver and all of the Space Marines trim using a nice bronze color. Then as an extra flare, I'll paint his eyes in red. You really only need the slightest bit of color on the lenses to give the impression that the eyes are in fact glowing. And since we're on such a roll, I'm gonna move on to the seventh legion, the Imperial Fists. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm gonna go straight for the white sprue once again, use one of the newer contrast paints, Imperial Fist, to see how that turns out on an epic scale mini. It turns out pretty damn well. This looks amazingly vibrant and I think the contrast paints really, really pull their weight on legions that are in entirely one color shade. Then I'm gonna go in with Black Legion to make sure that I really pump the black into all the trim. I don't want any yellow showing up through a lighter wash. And it's time to pick out the details and I'll apply one of the tiny, tiny little transfers onto this banner. Then to finish it off, I'll add a bit of a wash and a stipple just to blend the really harsh transfer onto the rest of the model. All right, I've hogged you for far too long. It's time to give you back to Dave. So when the new Mark III armor came out for the Horus Heresy, Games Workshop had sent us a box and we painted up every Legion. And in that video, Jen had painted the Night Lords and a few of you gave her a hard time for forgetting some lightning bolts. So unwilling to face the terrifying ire of keyboard warriors, I'm going to make sure I don't make that mistake today. And not only that, I'm gonna rectify the problem on the original mini and paint some lightning bolts. So as this is a bit of a learning experiment as well as maybe a tutorial, I decided to pull out the dry brush, grabbing the black based infantry and using a dry brush to bring in the blues. Night Lords are quite dark, although I will say of all the legions, they probably have one of the most inconsistent appearances. The tone of their blue armor seems to change drastically between their depictions, but the one thing that is definitely present is that red winged skull and those lightning bolts on the armor. So after I've done my dry brushing, I tackled the lightning bolts. Once again, I do find all of these effects are actually easier to achieve on small models. As long as you have a small brush, you can just make any wibbly scratchy lines all over this thing and it looks great. Once I'd painted all these scratchy lightning bolts, the rest of the Night Lord was super easy. I grabbed a bright red for that iconic Night Lord's logo and painted some little bat wings, centering it with a white dot of a skull. For all of the studs and metallic areas, I painted them with scales thrash metal and gave a little wash of Agrax Earthshade. And then looking over the model, not quite happy with how it had turned out because I think it's a little too dark. I brought back in another blue, a bright a blue and just re-highlighted the upper surfaces of the model. All in all, as an experimental paint job, this took me not very much time at all, maybe 15 minutes, which I think would be cut down to five if I was batch painting them. Oh yeah, and I promised to Night Lordify Jen's Night Lord, so I did that too. Here it is. But while I get fussy over freehand, let's see what Murray's doing with his loyalists. 
it's time for the Ninth Legion, the Blood Angels, and I'm going to once again start with a white marine and paint it with the contrast, as I think this is actually working really well for heresy scale miniatures. I think there's strengths and cons to both, and particularly with using contrast here, I think contrast is really good if you mix them together. Contrast straight out of the pot is a very lurid color a lot of the time, unless it's a brown. So if you mix two reds together, like let's say Blood Angels red and Flesh Terror's red, very appropriate colors for this marine, you end up with something that's about perfect for a 30k Blood Angels army. So I'm gonna apply that liberally all over, and then once that's dried, I'm gonna start, of course, with all the black areas, coating them so I can then go in and paint them silver and just give some little gold accents to the studs on the left shoulder pad. A couple of tiny green dots for the eyes once again, and I am actually in love with this one. This one looks super striking on the battlefield, and I'd love to see an army painted this way. And that brings us to halfway. Yes, it is the 10th Legion of the Iron Hands. Unfortunately, the Iron Hands don't see a lot other than their own demise. So I'm gonna do something a little bit special for them and give them a bit of extra love. So I'm going to build a Contemptor Dreadnought for them. However, choosing an extra model with more detail will also allow me to see just how effective dry brushing metal straight onto a black model will work. So as these parts were all clipped off the sprue that had already been primed, all I had to do was shave off any mold lines that were already on there. That is definitely one of the downsides to just painting directly on the sprue. You don't really have access, nor can you really see where some of these mold lines are hiding. So once I've cleaned it up, assembled it, and given it just another spritz of black, it's time to start dry brushing using a darker metal and then giving it a lighter pass with an even brighter one. Now, if it can be said that Iron Hands have any colors, it's black and silver. And at the moment, I just have silver. So I'm gonna try something just a little bit different to differentiate the black areas from the black areas I've done silver. And to do that, I'm gonna mix a black and a blue wash together so you get that nice highlight look. You'll see a lot of the Games Workshop box art, all the black is highlighted with the blue. So I'm gonna try and recreate that, albeit with a wash. And personally, I think it really worked. I'm quite happy with this. Once the wash is dried, I'm gonna give it just a little further highlight using a bit of blue mixed with bone. However, at the end of this, I can only feel that this really just looks like a Raven Guard Dreadnought now, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna go back and just lightly dry brush over all these black panels using a silver again, making sure that some of the blue is still definitely visible. Now I feel that there is definitely enough distinction between the metal and the quote unquote black metal sections. Then it's time for just a little bit of freehand. I'm gonna draw some of the cog sigils across the Dreadnought and very gently dot in some blue eyes. So while there was a lot that I could love about doing the traders, usually my favorites, there was one legion I really wasn't looking forward to. They're actually probably my least favorite legion in the Horus Heresy, and that was the 11th. I really hate with the 11th how they're Primarch. I don't feel that fits the lore very well. Also, the way they encountered Malkador never really sat right with me. But with the lore out of the way, I've just got to get to painting. Despite my misgivings, I do think I made a really good go of the 11th Legion and I'm really happy with how they turned out. But with those complete, the next traders on the list are the World Eaters. Now for the World Eaters, I wanted to go for a wonderfully aggressive looking assault marine with a chain sword. Now if you're looking to paint the World Eaters Legion at home, I recommend spraying white and that's what I've gone with for this one. And then I use the Apothecary White contrast to apply just a bit of shading and coloration into that armor all over. With this established, I got a matte white and just re-established the highlights to pick them out on all the armor panels. From there, I used a watered down Talisar blue contrast paint over the shoulder pad. And so far, I'm really liking this scheme. I've not been super fond with the contrast methods for my previous models and have been starting to lean away from it. But for the World Eater, it's working really well. To add a bit more of that blue coloration in, I also paint the jump pack the same way. The molecular studs and all the silver areas of the model, I paint in a dark gunmetal and then give them a tiny, tiny black black wash of Null Oil. And to start to connect the World Eater to later heresy, I painted the face of this model red. Now World Eaters are known not to take particularly good care of their armor and often look great when grungy and dirty. So to do that, I used a fine detail brush to apply small streaks of Agrax Earthshade into all of the recesses and run it up and down the white armor panels. This adds a huge amount of distinction and looks really good. It also doesn't take very long. By this stage of the model, taking away paint drying time you wouldn't have to worry about when batch painting, I've probably only painted this mini for about five minutes. 
For the World Eaters symbol, I roughly painted a red circle. It's quite difficult to freehand at this scale, but by just doing a circle and letting it be a bit jaggedy around the middle, it does look fairly reminiscent of the World Eaters symbol at a distance. For those final World Eaters touch, I get a tiny, tiny bit of Blood for the Blood God on speckle it over the model, and then I use a little bit of dark brown paint to put some tiny chips and scratches on the mini. With that, the 12th Legion are done. Dave got to dabble a little bit with some blue shoulder pads on the World Eaters, but now it's time for the boys who are truly in blue, the 13th Legion, the Ultramarines. And what could be more iconic for the Ultramarines than a Leiden Sergeant with a transverse crest on his head? So I'm gonna grab one of those from the Black Sprue and start painting that with a nice strong blue color. Then I'll go in and give it just a wash with the blue contrast, just to really pump up some of that blue, acting as both a glaze for the color, but also to shade it at the same time. Then since I started with a black primed model and I was fairly careful not to spill over anywhere, I can just start applying all the metal areas. Once that's done, applying some bone color to the crest will give me that really nice pattern. And then an extra bit of detail on the shoulder pad just to make him stand out. Some red for the eyes and we have an ultramarine done. It's back for me with the Death Guard and this is the third and probably final model I'm going to paint on those white sprayed bases. I have a feeling Death Guard's gonna be super easy so let's dive into it. Now for the Death Guard, I chose to paint a heavy support marine with a rocket launcher. The Death Guard favored a whole bunch of infantry in their army formations and the heavy weapon firing a disgusting rad missile into the enemy seemed very appropriate. To get the grungy Death Guard cream look, a skeleton horde contrast wash is applied across the whole model. With that done, I then got Vallejo's olive green and Kaiman green and painted the shoulder pads, doing a slight highlight towards the top. With these two main contrasty areas done, I could repaint all the other areas of the model black. This included the weapon, some belts and some pouches. With the black dry, we can move in and pick out the metallic areas with a dark silver, such as the missile launcher tubes and the housing for the rocket. And then to add a little bit of distinction, I used a dark brass color to paint the molecular bonding studs on the shoulder, as well as the rockets themselves. All of these elements were gone over with an Agrax earth shade wash, which continues the trend of getting that dirty look in all of the areas of the model, including the metal. I also applied a light gray line highlight to all of the black areas of the model as well. And just to be exceedingly torturous to myself, I painted the Death Guard symbol or attempted to scratchily on one shoulder. As a finishing touch, again, much like the World Eater, I got some brown paint and painted some rough chips across those white areas of armor. This really helps the model look a lot more detailed than it actually is and is a quick step to sell the infantry. Overall, this was an incredibly quick paint job and I could see batch painting an army in this method as being really efficient. After the 14th Death Guard, we have the 15th Thousand Sons, and these are one of the armies that I'm tempted to collect. So I'm gonna try my full scale paint scheme on them and go a little bit higher effort on this. To do this, we paint the whole model Retributor armor in two coats and then dry brush it lightly with Liberator Gold or just a mix of silver and gold that's quite bright. Then you apply a Druchi Violet wash, which brings a level of richness to the gold areas. With these done, mix Blood Angels contrast paint with gloss varnish in a 50-50 mix and then paint that over all the areas you'd like to be red, leaving the trim and accessories gold. Thousand Sun's accent color is cream, so I painted plenty of cream on the cape and also the gun housing. This was Viejo's khaki, which I then highlighted up to bone white. At this scale, we can do some pretty impressive effects with colored metallics. So I grabbed the emerald alchemy paint from the scale 75 range and just painted that sword blade. It looks like I've done a lot more work on this, but it is really just one coat of metallic paint. To add a few more spots of interest across the model, I also painted the areas that could be gemstones or decorations in this same paint. To homage the Egyptian theme and the future of the Thousand Suns, I decided to paint the plume of this model in a gorgeous turquoise. A simple base coat and edge highlight will suffice with pretty much everything at epic scale. The final step for this model was to paint his shoulder pad and as I said, this is a captain, this is one I want to go a bit more high effort on. And I'm currently playing a character in tabletop time roleplay who is from the Third Fellowship, so I decided to go for the Third Fellowship of Thousand Suns. That means painting the shoulder with a black black strip down the center of it, and then freehanding the Thousand Suns sun iconography. With all those steps done, I'm really happy with this prayer tour. And while I think this is probably one of the more high intensity paint jobs, it still shows how much you can get out of these epic models in a really quick space of time. So Warhammer Epic is something that Murray and I have been really keen on trying for a very long time. And obviously there's a lot more in this box and a lot more products coming out for the game. While we thought it would be a great idea to do a little tutorial or a showcase of how to paint all the legions, there's a lot more we'd love to do with the game. So I'm really interested to hear if you would all like to see that because we're potentially thinking about creating entire armies, a full gaming board for Epic scale. And I don't wanna promise battle report because we have a pretty bad track record of that. 
that a report coming next week? Next week? The week after? It's coming in November. We have a release date. Uh, it's coming in November. But uh, yeah, we want to do a lot more with Epic uh, if you want to see it. So please be vocal. Let us know if you'd like to see more tiny, 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 tiny space marines. It would be fun. Jen doesn't want to do it because there's no elder or sisters. Now I've got a slog of four traitor legions in a row. So here come the 16th, the Sons of Horus, the poster boys themselves. Sons of Horus have an extremely simple paint scheme, which means choosing them for your epic army is going to be a breeze. To paint these models, I scratchily highlighted on jade green on top. Now you might be wondering what I mean when I'm saying a scratchy highlight. Well, it's a really simple way to create texture on small models. It's really somewhere between dry brushing and layer painting rather than focusing on nice moist paint creating smooth blends, what you're actually doing is getting a fairly dry brush but using the same paint technique as layer painting. So you're kind of just feathering it on and creating a bit of texture and a bit of roughness in the area where the gradient meets. This allows the model to gradiate from a sort of black where some thin coat of paint spills over, making it blend all the way up to that bright green. With this done, amazingly most of the Son of Horus is complete. All you need to do is pick out all the metallic areas in a dark metal and then give them a null noise wash. And then for a splash of decoration and color, I went for a dark brown for the pouches and tabards and a blood red for the plume up top. And then in probably my weakest example of tiny freehand today, I painted a shonky looking Sons of Horus eye, shrugged and moved on to the 17th Legion. Now Murray got to do a Dreadnought, so I thought, well, I want to do a Dreadnought, and I chose to do a model that was large enough to have some freehand on it because I wanted to do something special with the 17th Legion, the Word Bearers. With this model sprayed black and assembled, I used a dry brush to paint on Scarlet Red, followed by a highlight dry brush of Blood Red. By using a dry brush here, we have this really dark tone, leaving the black in the recesses a little bit, making it nice and textured and scratchy, and meaning we don't have to use a wash, which can pull in ugly ways on models of this scale. With the reds established incredibly easily, I cleaned up some areas that I was going to leave black, such as the shoulder pads and the gun, and then used a light gray to do a sharp line highlight on them. Metallic areas such as the gun barrels and joints were painted in a dark metal, specifically scale 75's black metal, and then washed with null oil. These steps left a beautiful canvas for me to do some freehand on, which would give most of the flavor to this word bearer. I used a very light gray and a fine detail brush to create some patterns, doing circles, lines, and strange, I believe they call them hexagramic runes, representing the nascent understanding of warp and demons in these word bearers. A really, really easy tip here for doing the supposed scripture on word bearers is to get a fine brush with a minimal amount of paint on it and basically really delicately stipple in lines. This gives the effect of text at a... To finish up this model, I painted the word bearer symbol on the shoulder using khakis to establish the pages of the book and then oranges to create the flame in the center. This model was incredibly fun to paint and I've never really cared much for word bearers, but this mini made me, which was awesome. But that's it for me for now. It's time to check in with Murray for his last couple of loyalists. All right, Dave had you for long enough. It's time for me again, and it's time to do the 18th Legion, the Salamanders. And as they are master artisans, I'm going to use the Cataphracty model to represent them. Starting with the Black Prime model, I'm gonna start by applying a really nice base coat of a strong green and then give it a dry brush with a more acidic green to get those highlights happening. And when that's done, I'm going to start with all the silvers and all the really nice gold trim that's on salamanders. This color scheme is working out really well for this model, so I'm really happy with this one. Some final highlights making the tassels brown and then an extra highlight onto the green making it really stand out. The final loyalist legion on this list is the 19th legion, the Raven Guard, the edgy boys. Since I started this video with a black colored marine, I'm going to try something just a little bit different. I'm going to paint this Raven Guard starting with a white base and I'm going to use contrast to see how well you can do a black marine doing that. Okay, keep that in. I'm keeping the part where I said keep that in. <laughs> then I check. So I'm going to apply black Templar all over this white model. And even though the Raven Guard have white accents, I'm not going to worry about those. I'll do those at the end as I want to make sure that the black goes in absolutely everywhere. Then when that's completely dry, I'll do all the silvers and start working on all the white accents. I'm going to start with the white and give it a space horse contrast just to get that really nice blue tint on it. And then with some red eyes, I'm going to leave you with the final legion. Take it away, Dave. 
So the final legion is the other legion I need to decide between. It's the Alpha Legion. These are the guys I collect in Heresy, but I'm known to do a completely different paint scheme using gradients of purples up to teal. However, for this Alpha Legionnaire, I wanted to do something that would be more reflective of how everyone else paints Alpha Legion. So I'm going with the base paint scheme. Starting with a black model, I'm going to use these amazing metallics from Scale 75, Cobalt Metal and Emerald Alchemy. What's really important with this step is you cannot paint the whole model sloppily with a brush. It's critical to carefully paint with these metallics, leaving black in between the armor panels. So if you have a gauntlet, a wrist and an elbow, you just paint a section in between leaving black on either edge. This creates the effect of black lining without needing to do any of the effort of actually black lining. It's super easy to do. You just have to be precise with how you're painting. And it also doesn't take very long. The reason this is critical is because at this scale, if you were to paint the whole model in these metallics, there isn't enough depth in the model to create definition. You'd lose detail in the reflective surface of the metallic paint gradiated across the entire figure. So following this principle and painting all of the armored sections, it only took me a minute to lay down this paint. I then used Emerald Alchemy to highlight all of these areas. This was already looking pretty great for Alpha Legion and so far is the quickest paint scheme of the day. But to punch it up a notch and to make it reminiscent of the original paint scheme of the Heresy Alpha Legion as depicted in the book Legion, I applied the wash Drucci Violet with a layer brush onto the lower areas of all of the armor, creating a nice little purple tint and a gradient. This also helps to tone down the metallic effect across the whole mini. With this done, I re-establish black in the areas that need to be black, such as the gun, and then use heavy metal from scale 75 to highlight the silver to mechanical metallic areas, such as the chain blade, the vents on the backpack, and the molecular bonding studs. I then paint the pouch on the side brown and give it a little wash of Agrax Earthshade. With this done, I attempted to paint a the XX of the Legion 20th on the shoulder, really hated it, and repainted the shoulder black. After doing this, it became clear to me that having the right shoulder pad black on these Alpha Legion at this scale is actually just a great thing, and I would recommend it. It really breaks up the color scheme and looks really good, and it's also perfectly in line with how Heresy Alpha Legion are painted usually. On this shoulder pad, I did something wild and painted a little Hydra in freehand. Hey there, my Legion, I had to go a little bit extra on the Alphas, and I'm really happy with the result. To finish it off, a tiny blood red dot in each of the eyes for those lenses. That's a step you can skip at home, but if you do want to do it, my big tip is get a really fine brush and don't try and paint the eyelids. Let the natural vibration of your hand do it for you. Just hold the paintbrush close to the eye, get as close as you can without thinking you're going to touch it, and lo and behold, you will touch it. All right, that's it. This has been so much fun and the results have been really cool. As I said before, I'd love to hear what you think and if you'd like to see us take Epic really far because we'd love to do it on the channel. That's enough prattling, let's show off these models. And just in case you had forgotten just how small these models are, here's some bits to remind you.
This video has been made possible by you, the patrons. If you'd like to consider joining up and supporting the content that we make at Tabletop Time, Patreon is the best and most direct way of doing it. We do weekly behind the scenes updates as well as have an awesome mini review and private discord. So if you'd love to get on board and give it a shot, consider supporting us, links are in the description. Thank you to all our wonderful patrons who have got us this far and we're super excited for all the cool content we're gonna keep making. It's done, that was fun. It was, that was, that was great. So uh, have you decided what legion you're going to paint? I have indeed. What legion are you going to paint? Solar Auxilia. <laughs> Their tanks are cool. Ah, okay, well that's cool, because that means uh, you can have that stuff and I'll take the legion stuff because I am going to collect. I still haven't decided. Nice. It's either a thousand, I, I think I'm not going to do Iron Warriors. I'm either going to do Thousand Suns or Alpha Legion. And I'm, I'm just going to sit on the fence. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know what Legions that our video might have inspired you to pick up. Like maybe you, you were thinking about painting it one way and thought, oh, this now looks really approachable. Let us know in the comments what ones you might be thinking of now, but also give Dave a poke. Um, thanks for watching. Oh, mm. Thousand Suns are very high effort. I might do Alpha Legion. Oh, what if I did Thousand Suns? Nah, I can't deal. <laughs>